In today's video, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the platform effector 2D. So I've got a platform all set up. It already has a box collider on it. We're just going to come in and add that platform effector 2D. And in order to get it to work, one of our colliders is going to have to have the used by effector ticked. So to start off with, let's go ahead and use the, well, let's go ahead and take a look at the used by collider. Now, if you go ahead and turn this off, it's the exact same thing as having it ticked and everything selected. And that means that it interacts with everything that's on a layer, which of course, everything by default is on a layer. And we're going to interact with all the layers. If we were to go ahead and put it on and be selective about our layers, I'm going to only have it work with the player layer. So our box is on the default layer. Our player right there is on the player layer. So now the only thing that it interacts with is my player layer. There we go. I'm going to go ahead, put that back to everything. And now the rotational offset. When you start getting different angles on your platforms, but you still want to be able to do your calculations based on up being in this direction, you can use the rotational offset to, well, change the way things are being calculated. We'll look at this in a, in a bit when we look at different angles. The main thing most people use the platform effector 2D for is the use one way. And that just allows you to jump up from the bottom. So there we go. As opposed to, well, if we turn it off, we can't jump from the bottom anymore. Now the one way grouping allows us to go ahead and take game objects that have multiple colliders on them and have the one way settings affect them. Now the surface arc allows us to define what angles are defined as the surface or the top. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this platform and we'll set that one up. So I've gone ahead and added a platform effector to our little platform over here. Now because it is rotated 45 degrees, I've had to go ahead and take the rotational offset and rotate it back to 45 degrees. It's going to work with every everything on a, a layer, which of course is everything by default. We do have the one way setting set, so I can jump up to the top. And right now I have the surface arc set to 90 degrees, which is should be this exact angle here. So let's take a look at this. So I started up, I'm going to run over there. Let's go jump on it. Sure enough, I'm on it. Now the material I have on it has a bit of bounce to it and a really sticky friction. We'll look at that in the next example. But as you can see, I can jump up through the bottom and get to the top. Let's take a look at what happens when that angle does not fall within there anymore. So I'm gonna go in and we'll just drop it down to 80. So this angle no longer works. If we come and try to jump on it again, we can't. So I'll go ahead, we'll stop that. And let's take another look at the example where we can go ahead and use the sides. Now in this next example, I've gone ahead and created a hexagon. I've had to rotate it 30 degrees. And because of that, I've gone ahead and rotated it backwards, at least the offset, negative 30, just so I have that up pointing up. It's set to allow everything to interact with it. I do have one way set. And the surface arc I have set is 120 degrees. Now the side arc works just like the surface arc, but it dictates what is considered the side. I know you can't see my air quotes, but in class you can. So anything stemming out from the side in 60 degrees is considered to be the side. And we have some properties for the physics of the sides. Right now I have it set up to use friction. And if we go ahead and take a look at my physical material 2D, I have friction set to do 10 and a bounciness of one. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. So I'm gonna come over, we'll jump to the top, or what's considered to be the surface, and we've got this balance going. I'm gonna open up the sides, and when I get to the side, I just stick, because I'm using the friction. If I were to turn that off and jump again, I just slide right down. And let's also turn the bounciness on. At this angle, you're not gonna see much of a bounce, but you'll see some. There we go. And of course, if we turn that off, the bounce, and we jump again, no bounce. So there we go. The Platform Effector 2D. You'll probably be using this quite a bit if you're making a platformer game, just for nothing more than the ability to jump up through the bottom. 
And I believe this actually is the last effector we had to look at. So as always, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. So if you like the video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. It really does help me out here on YouTube. And go ahead and follow me on Twitter. You're a pretty chatty guy over there. When I'm not walking through a forest. Or being stalked by eagles and falcons. Lions, tigers, and bears. <laughs>